Well, hello there, and good morning, everyone. Welcome. First of all, metaphor. Thank you so very much for that delicious subwoof. Was not expecting to open the stream with a subwoof coming in already, but dog damn, thank you very much. And welcome. Also, hello there, Regis. Welcome to the stream as well. <clears throat> A metaphor says two months of putting up with you. Well, it has been only a pleasant experience thus far. Putting up with all of you. Well, so I am more than okay with that. But anyway, <clears throat> let's start uh, talking and thinking about uh, that. Uh, D and D maps for today. Once again, to the sound of uh, Civilization V's uh, soundtrack, the leader themes which we were playing last time around but now we're gonna keep up with that because they're cool and I like them there's no subtitles or anything so your guys are gonna have to guess who's who with the soundtrack but anyway so RPG maps I've been doing them for a while now I have done some in the past let me, in fact, go and load up, uh, uh, not the latest, I don't think. <clears throat> Although the latest one is super duper cool, and I like it so very much. It's kind of spoilery to just go ahead and throw that up there. Let me just give it a real quick check out, just to see that I'm not showing anything spoilery going on in here. <clears throat> that should do. And also, hello there, Ben. Wolf Morning. Welcome to the stream. How's it going with you? So, um, this is one of my previous maps that I have made um, for a previous adventure of sorts, which is a weird thing in D&D. Like not, not necessarily weird is actually good structurally, but I it just doesn't happens with me. Uh, this whole thing where people <clears throat> go and um, inside the campaign there's several adventures. It's good to keep the whole thing structured and divided in quote unquote chapters. But anyway, uh, so this last map I've made, well not the last, but one of my previous maps uh, is an example of what you of what we can do with the amazing power of uh, Clip Studio and other such uh, illustration programs when doing battle maps. We don't need those. We can just go ahead and draw battle maps on the fly. Pick up a piece of paper, a pen, and graph paper actually uh, a nice a nice thick pen and draw in there and say this is the battle area go nuts that is a thing you can do it's completely viable but for some things I I, I feel like planning ahead of time is interesting and that is more or less what I want to do I want to plan ahead of time and thus, having such a battle map, actually, let me just take this out of here, so we don't uh, get distracted by that tab there. Um, that's uh, one of the commissions I'm working in. Let me actually close it, since we're not going to be using that. Uh, drawing, the, drawing a battle map requires a lot of prior planning, <clears throat> which isn't something you can just go ahead and do on the fly. You need to have planned this 
previously, which kind of doesn't help. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, metaphor says that's the mayor office, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, this is the whole mayor's mayor manor map. It's uh, it's pretty simple. Yeah, there's a concise style going on there. And Cat Vincent, hello and welcome. Thank you so very much for that follow and welcome to our pack. I made a Kami, welcome and good morning to you too. How's it going? How are you and how are you doing, Mido? How are you doing, Ben? Metaphor and Regis as well, how are you guys doing? So. <clears throat> This is all cool and all, but one thing I was thinking about yesterday night uh, was about modular dungeons. Because it would have been incredibly nice. It would be incredibly nice, actually. Uh, if during. Uh, if I could just like go and randomly uh, build up a dungeon. Made of made out of modules. So, for example, I have this room, and then I plop down another room, and then another room, and start building a dungeon like that. Uh, it helps. It makes things super lovely. Uh, visually appealing as well. The problem, however, is with uh, <clears throat> performance. Because, as, as you guys may know, we work with uh, Roll20, and Roll20 is kind of nasty in that aspect, because Roll20 uh, is kind of bad for uh, optimization-wise, it doesn't know how to handle too many images and whatnot. So let's go to an, an, an actual new file and talk a little bit about that. Turn on the grid, zoom in quite a lot, change our, change our grid settings, go to view, uh, grid settings. Uh, the grid is 100, 100 pixels in size and it has two divisions. And so the grid is, <clears throat> let's also turn in, uh, snap into the grid here. So our grid is 100 by 100 pixels, with each subdivision being, with two subdivisions, we make, which makes each block uh, 50 pixels tall and wide. And that's, that's our grid. So one thing I had in mind was to make uh, rooms with sizes such as, say, 3x3 three three or two by two or even four by four uh, pixels and then have like ju just these rooms with a little bit of a uh, floor texture going on a little bit of work in the walls and whatnot and then in row 20 just pick up this image and plop it down and that works pretty well the problem is after you plop down like the Tent room uh, performance in row 20 is going to start being affected negatively, <clears throat> especially because you're not just going to be popping down rooms. You're going to be popping down rooms, and then there's going to be a tie uh, a, a a box which is just like a door. So, um, so there's this. Damn it. There's this grid here, which is like just a door. And then because of how... Um, because of how I was thinking of making these uh, things here, I couldn't just simply go and plop down a door on one side. I would need to go and plop down a door on the other side to make sure that it connects. So for example, I would need to go, copy this around to the other side here, 
then flip it. I think that rule 20 allows you to flip things. And there you go, we would have a door. So uh, any door would be like uh, two uh, blocks instead of just being one single block to save size and whatnot. And all in all, the idea works. Problem is, uh, Roll20 has two limitations. First is a space. We can't throw in too much space uh, in Roll20. And the second is performance. If we throw in too many pictures and images and whatnot, uh, Roll20 is going to start performing badly. So that is a thing I can't do, unfortunately. Maybe I can, but it, mm, it's going to be weird. And also, Kuhn, Bad Aim Raccoon, welcome to the stream, how's it going? Amido Kami says, doing fine, just got you a new printer, oh nice, now you're gonna be able to print some documents and papers and whatnot, that's great to hear, and Rig is very super happy, oh my dog, that's awesome to hear, and Ben, you said, doing good, just work clearing like always, what do you mean work clearing? Not sure what you mean by that. And Kat Vincent says, dealing with two grouchy, grouchy kitties while watching Twitter. They didn't want to come inside to eat. Mommy had to put her foot down on that one. So now they are sitting and staring at you for not feeding them for an entire day because they didn't come to eat. Oh, the poor kitties. <clears throat> Nonetheless, uh, welcome to the stream and tour our lives now hope we're doing well I hope the the, the cat situation uh, gets resolved sooner rather than later so this is my initial thoughts on on a module modular maps um, th that's some thoughts I had in mind and then later, one thing I was thinking about was how to make modular maps better to, to, to deal with. And I don't know... That name it. Opera. Oh, it's breaking on me. That damn you. So... Uh, Roll20 wise, there's a lot of interesting things going on with it. So I kinda. Let me go ahead and see if I can throw that in there. In, in the. There we go. Opera. In the Twitch. Uh, in the Twitch. It, it's showing up now. Shouldn't show up that high. Let's uh, reorganize those windows here real quick. There we go. Opera is in the is in the Twitch screen now. So, um, one thing that is doable in Roll Twenty that I was thinking about is that here in maps and backgrounds we have a whole uh, set of tools here to draw and whatnot, and these uh, drawing tools that are with that that do come with a roll twenty are much lighter to work with than throwing plopping out pictures. So one thing that could help is making uh rooms in roll twenty so you come in with polygon line and then you hold down shift and start plopping down in corners. Shift it uh snaps to to the corner of little squares so we could easily go ahead and start drawing rooms uh, in row 20 um, putting them down just like that it does take some some prior not planning because things such as doors here for example uh, once you plop them down once you plop down a room like this uh, you, you can't change that, you can't erase because Roll20 is kinda 
it's kind of I don't want to say dumb. <laughs> so I have to, so you have to be very creative when uh, plopping down rooms in Roll Twenty. Another another problem that I have with Roll Twenty and the plopping of uh, rooms and walls and whatnot is that uh, Roll Twenty has also this <clears throat> ability to reveal and hide portions of the map. So, for example, when adventurers they enter in a room for the first time, I can reveal map, I can click and drag, or I can hold shift to snap to corners, which makes revealing and hiding areas much faster. So I could go and reveal this room and say, hi, you entered this room, what now? And then there's also the polygon reveal, which helps to make stuff such as like, ah, you get into the room, but you don't have a view of everything yet. Because of... Uh, the angle at which you enter the room. For example. <clears throat> and one thing that I have problem with this is that uh, these walls, they are incredibly thin. So this is how it looks for me, but for players. Yep, spoilers. Lots of things there you shouldn't be seeing. Uh, the fog of war. It shows for players with full darkness. No, nope, that's the other way around. Never mind. Uh, it shows up to players with full darkness. So it shows to them like this. So for players, it's impossible to tell when you're in, uh, to when you explore the full extent of a room and hit a wall or or not. So that's a little bit of a. Uh, so that's a little bit of problem, a hitch we, we, we hit by using, uh, by make drawing rooms like this. It's impossible for players to know that they hit a wall or not. So the only solution we have for that right now is to go into polygon line. Uh, when drawing rooms, instead of using black, uh, using another color such as, I don't know, a lighter shade of grey, uh, drawing our rooms. One way of, one interesting way of making rooms and not losing a whole lot of progress is just drawing two walls. That's so if you have to erase a room to plop in a impromptu door in there, you don't have to erase the whole thing. and shift click to snap into the corners uh, right click to stop drawing lines that's so you can keep doing that forever and here should be a wall so I have to go and delete that uh, should be a door rather so yeah just go plopping down lines here and there now stop <clears throat> until you're happy with the results then you go in and drag uh, selection box to select everything and here in the lines you uh, regular thickness you're just going and throwing an extra large thickness uh, to make the walls have some more dimension going on with them and then we review areas of the dungeon oh, never mind oh duck damn it that's not how this thing works Ctrl Z doesn't undo uh, drawing of rooms, <clears throat> of walls, uh, revealing of areas rather. So say the explorers, they come in through there and they just reveal the first room. They don't get to see anything else. They do see a little bit extra because of their placement. And there we go, we get to reveal a little, a little bit of, in, of room. And now, if we were to go and look into the player view, uh, it's a little bit easier for them to tell, oh, we encountered walls. It isn't like the most elegant solution, but it's an easy way of making rooms in Roll20 in a fast-ish way. <coughs> And also, hello there, Nathan and and Ray. Welcome to the stream, the both of you. 
How are you guys doing this lovely Friday morning? Hope you guys are doing good. <clears throat> and Ray, you'd say new DM Shep here. Indeed, you're gonna you're gonna be DMing your own adventure soon enough, and learning how to draw maps, especially in Row Twenty, is is a, is a great idea. So let's go down there. Uh, turn down the opacity for the uh, fog of war feature. Let's reset the fog <clears throat> for the whole map. So this is one way of drawing rooms, and as it happens in World Twenty, when you draw rooms like this, uh, it doesn't waste so much <coughs> on your um, on your computer, or rather, performance-wise, it doesn't weigh down weighs down too much on World Twenty. However, if I were to want to add in little little things like, say, for example. Uh, this room, I want to add in some furniture and whatnot. It it <clears throat> takes a while, and it's per, uh, not ha, not impossible to make in Roll Twenty because our drawing drawing tools is like draw shapes, which is limited to squares and circles, freehand, and polygon slash line drawing and text drawing, and with that you can't very well go and start making furniture. Also, speaking of freehand, freehand it would be a good idea to go and draw uh, natural uh, environments such as caverns. So we can start over there, start drawing. I feel like it should be showing in some sort of contour as I go drawing along instead of just showing when I release. But that is another way of making uh, natural passages as well. So that that's dope. Caverns and the such. But like I said before, you can't erase away. So the only the only way to erase when you draw uh, when you draw a wall and you said, "Ah, oh, dang! I wish there was a door in there." Uh, the only way I can think of going and doing that is drawing a shape, which is a white uh, or white. Well, actually, no contour, so contour is transparent, but filling is white. Then you go in and draw there, and you have now a white shape on top of the other things. Problem <laughs> with Rule 20 is that sometimes when you're drawing shapes, selecting them is kind of a bitch. Sometimes. Uh, when you have your mouse on top of the thing you want to select, it doesn't shows this selection mouse, so it can get really tricky. Especially now if you have like uh, objects going on and stuff and whatnot, it, it, it's not fun. And especially now we're on the maps and background layer, and eventually I'm gonna start throwing in files all over the place uh, for all sorts of things. Here, for example, I can say ah, I'm, I want a a door going on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw a door. And I say I want windows in this uh, a window here and a window here as well. So I could go and uh, select a polygon line, drawing a white line, no fillet, and change the size now to regular, for example and dragging from this from there to there it disappears so we're gonna go select and move now in here okay they have to eyeball that and then, then we can change the uh, size to a better fit our needs in here for example I can go and throw out the contour that so we don't have that weird artifact going on and this is one way of drawing rooms in row 20. So as you can see, it is possible to make rooms in row 20. So my whole idea of making modular rooms isn't so good. <laughs> Visually it's more appealing, but it's more problematic because 
well, like I said, performance issues. Drawing runes straight up in Roll20 is possible, totally. Problem with that is that um, doing this on the fly, like, oh, your players enter the room or a house you were not expecting them to go into, and then you have a minute or two to throw in some impromptu event on them to get the players talking for a while while you go and draw these these rooms. Uh, you won't have a whole lot of time to go ahead and draw your room, so planning ahead of time always helps with figuring out layout of houses and places and shit. And better yet, instead of planning ahead if you actually have the time to go and draw a map, even better. But anyway, th this is more or less what I wanted to talk about. I have plans and I thought of making modular rooms to help me with that, but in the end, making rooms straight up in, uh, in Roll20 is faster and easier than making something something modular. It's not gonna be as beautiful, but it's, it's the probably one of the best ways to go about this. Is drawing rooms in Roll20 and in case you need to add furniture, which is the thing I thought of doing, instead of making modular rooms, just make like uh, furniture, like chests and chairs and tables and whatnot. That so when players go into rooms, uh, they don't just see like one piece of furniture and say that's something we need to explore. When they see a room full of stuff, um, everything blends and the and the tr hidden trickery is a little bit more hidden and less conspicuous. And uh, Roll20 does have uh, assets which you can get, like free, free assets, such as characters you can just go in and throw uh, right in and there. Say for example, I will, you go in and find a soldier, behold, it's a fighter boy. It's a thing you can do. They have pre-made assets going on here, and they also have some assets for like uh, building places. Uh, I think they have one for taverns here. Uh, maybe townsfolk, I guess. No, they don't. Oh, but anyway, if you need something, you can always go in and type in to search, for example, chest. Uh, it searches for the library. There is a fancy chest in the free assets, and there are premium chests, which you can buy uh, and use. And then there, and you also search the internet for chests, sprites, I don't know where exactly it searches for, but it finds some things that sometimes are good, sometimes are not. But then again, after you add in your fifth or tenth item, uh, there starts to be discrepancy in visual style, so that's a thing you have to deal with. And Rain Shep says the cavern must have been a bitch. Uh, what cavern? And you're okay, they have free stuff items in it. That they do. But... They don't have everything you need, and some stuff has some weird visual style discrepancies going on. <clears throat> but anyway, Oni you said Nekisi, and Kun you said Sleepy, and Oni don't cause Michael Bay explosions, <clears throat> it is true for that. So in the end, this is my take on Roll20, it's faster to just draw rooms in here. Uh, so instead of making modular rooms, just uh, draw rooms straight up in Roll20, but for a lot of things it's best to already have like plenty in the back of your mind the basic layout of houses and whatnot. And when it comes when it comes to planning basic layouts, I really like doing so in Roll20. I mean Clip Studio. <clears throat> because in Clip Studio uh Drawing places is easier, faster, and there's this whole grid 
a feature which helps when drawing. So instead of making modular rooms, it's much better to just go ahead and actually draw the whole, the whole freaking place, and then have the image save, saved somewhere. And when it comes to battle, you just plop that, that down. So go and draw the room ahead of time, and when it comes to battle, put that in. And instead of having modular stuff on Roll Twenty, have modular stuff here on Clip Studio like uh, furniture and whatnot. A metaphor says it would appear that Roll20 also has an API which can control maps and reveal of maps. Really? Oh yeah, the lightning, the lightning and revealing and whatnot. Uh, the line of sight. Uh, so those API scripts, they have a problem. I don't know uh, for sure. That those API scripts are available because if I am not mistaken, those API scripts there that you're looking at, uh, you have to be a premium user to be able to use them. So you need a subscription and whatnot. <clears throat> so I don't think that anyone can just go and start using them and subscription to roll 20 is kind of weird but anyway they do have a whole lot of apis though which is fun so uh let's start let's start talking about maps <clears throat> when drawing i like to have my uh my grid like I said, in this whole, uh, each block is uh, 50 pixels, even though the uh, the row 20 default is weirdly enough, um, not 50, the default is actually 70 pixels. So each block, each cell is 70 pixels. I don't get why. It makes everything just complicated because say for, for example we have a map that is uh, 15 blocks wide and 15 blocks tall uh, you end up with some weird numbers depending on how your map is going you can end up with some crazy weird numbers so I much like using uh, 50 pixels for for the cell size also it makes the whole map a little bit smaller and you can fit more information in there uh, with the same screen size the problem of using a smaller uh, pixel sizes for example 70 uh, 50 instead of 70 is that when you start uh, when you get your playing and you plop down, for example, uh, a character. Let me just find a random ass character here. For example, this this dust hardly boy here. Uh, if I throw down this character and I just start plopping down effects on him, say like, ah, he is number one, and he has uh, the this nail icon on him. Uh, two icons already occupies the whole thing. However, if our cell width is like a hundred pixels. Uh, we have a whole lot more space to fill in icons and and things. So 70 is a good size, but 50 uh, makes calculations easier with a little bit of just space compromise. And one thing that is cool about Roll20 is that uh, you can throw in values like life, for example, he has 25 hit points out of a possible 30. If you add a min and a maximum, it adds in a little bar on top of their heads with that value. But if we're playing with smaller pixel size, say 50 for example, uh, the size of that bar also becomes a little bit smaller and cramped. Bork. Bork. Almost a year of subwoofing. <laughs> it is indeed uh, almost a whole year. There's those three very paused borks 
Gotta love them. Thank you so very much, Ray, for that never-ending support. And so much champion is going on. Thank you very much. And Oni says, touch the burn on now. I will not, Oni, unfortunately. The metaphor says, you are correct. This page is about a feature exclusive to pro subscribers. Yeah, and I'm not gonna go and subscribe to that. <clears throat> not at all. So before I actually start working on the map, I just want to talk about two more real quick things. First is... So now we, we've gone and talked a little bit about modularity. And... Verdict is working with modular whatever is iffy and tricky. Especially if you need to make maps on the go and you don't have a illustration program with you ready. <clears throat> it can really uh, really it doesn't help. But if you do have the time to go ahead and draw a map and whatnot, uh, Modularity helps with things such as the map of Dorf, uh, which is a map I drew, I drew in for the campaign of the main city where the characters are. Uh, one thing that this map has is modularity with the houses. I <coughs> I did I did draw in uh, blocks for houses and whatnot, and foolishly I started drawing the houses manually until I did like this. Uh, this this uh, six blocks here on the left and this uh, four six blocks here on the right and then I said no I spent hours doing this I won't do this anymore <clears throat> then what I did was I drew a few house a few house models and I start uh, copying and pasting them around the place <clears throat> So these houses here are extremely unique, but every other house after that, they're the same model. Like this one here, you can tell that it's clearly this house here. Uh, this house here, you can see that it just like got two of them and uh, just spin it around a little bit. <clears throat> and here I uh, got this... Uh, L-shaped house with a little, with a little slant going on at the end. Uh, here, I picked like two of these and kind of mixed them together. Here, just popped in another house like this. And to make ha modular houses like this, what helped is this whole grid thing going on here. I made very, very small houses too, for whatever reason. Just, just that so I had, I was able to fill in some space real quick. And this modularity helped me populate this whole city without having to spend way too much time thinking about it. I was able to just go and do that fast. <clears throat> Still took me time to go and manually drawing roads and whatnot, but after I had the blocks, drawing houses was gonna take forever, so just copy and pasting around uh, really helped. So for things like this, a map that you're gonna make once and use forever, modularity helps quite a lot. <clears throat> And that's the last thing I want to talk about. This is a previous map I did. And Nathan says, Dorf, a city named a uh, city. Uh, I don't know. I actually used a random name generator for cities and whatnot. And I, f I think that... Uh, for the city and the characters are exploring currently, uh, there was just a bunch of cities named uh, uh, named after Germanic words. Uh, German words used to come up with city names, and then. <clears throat> And then when one of the names it suggested was just Dorf, and I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> Sounds simple enough. 
that people will remember that. And Kung says the city of a Townsville. <laughs> exactly, just like that. And Nathan says there is usually a something dwarf. Well, I'll keep that in mind for next time. <clears throat> so let's get back to actually drawing maps. Uh, even though I already have here like a, a, a working grid and I can just start going nuts here, drawing houses and shit. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time just planning out this whole uh, map first because I want to do something uh, a little bit more interesting here. <clears throat> And like like we said, I can make a map by using this 50 by 50 size, or I can increase it to 70. But I feel like for most of what I do, 50 has been working great. And by using 50 pixels uh, cells instead of 70, in the end, the final image uh, is a smaller and therefore occupies less disk space. And Roll20 has a limit on how uh, how much disk space you have for your files so saving space on files is always a good idea so let's uh, plan a little bit what i have in mind now uh we're in a we're in a point of, in the in our campaign where spoilers uh, spoiler alerts for those of you delicious boys and girls who are uh squeamish about spoilers um Players are gonna start exploring other places in the in in other cities. There's the city of Dorf, and there's the, all the other cities that players are gonna start exploring from now on. And it would be nice for them to have places to go in said cities. Uh, last time I drew maps, I drew the map of a. Uh, of a tavern, in slash tavern, and then uh, a, a wizard tower, just kind of in the same region. I think you guys remember that one. I want to do another wizard tower, but this time I want to fill it in more like a a dungeon of sorts, like a place, a, a gauntlet of uh, obstacles you have to go through if you want to break into that place so let's start thinking about that since this is a this is gonna be a big ass tower I think something about some 30 40 feet of height is good enough but another thing to keep in mind is that each cell here is about uh, five, uh, well, five feet. Each cell is about five feet. So keeping that in mind is a good idea when coming up with sizes. So, say for example, four by four would be twenty by twenty feet, which in meters, if I'm not mistaken, is like six by six meters which is actually pretty big uh, tower however would be a little bit more so I guess that uh, 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 actually 6 by 6 so 6 by 6 or 8 by 8 uh, feels like a big enough size for a tower Or I can actually just go and put those two uh, models together. How about this wizard here has a tower that leads to another tower? Like they have a tower that has no uh, f no base floor, or rather there is a base floor, but it doesn't connect to the upper floor. It says, f say for example, uh, this wizard. Here has a... as their tower there is a bottom floor where says for example it also kind of connects to a little house um, 
that is some sort of curiosity shop where people can come in say there's a door around here they come in there's like uh, little shelves with products going on there's a little counter where they, the wizard sits behind of and they receive people and talk with them a little bit and explain the products and magic and shit and then if people ask them ah, I want this then they go into the bottom part of their tower which at this point is just like a storage area so boxes all over the place <clears throat> and shit then they have a secret door uh, in their storage area that just goes into a side room there is a smaller tower that has no way inside other than through this secret tunnel and then inside this a smaller tower uh, say it has two three levels I guess And each level has a series of traps uh, that turns on and off, depending on how they go about it. So staircase, uh, actually, uh, they come in through here. Then here, there starts a circular staircase. It crosses, uh, hugs the wall. It go makes a 90, uh, 180 degrees uh, turn. And then you're on the second floor, then another 180, <clears throat> and you go to the last floor, where you do another 180 to finish. Uh, and by now, we're just like empty space. So there's no floor in the middle floors here. Maybe in the second there is, but not in the third. Because I want there to be a big ass fall, in case someone <laughs> gets flung off <clears throat> the, the staircase. <clears throat> and then here on the last floor there's a little bit of like floor just half of the tower there's floor and then there's a uh, this battlement here so for example it is a battlement uh, on the topest floor of this battlement uh, there's a connection to the top floor of this big ass tower here Where is the actual lair of this wizard? Where they go and do... Where they leave, where they have their bed and whatnot and... Where life happens, pretty much. And then maybe also here. Um, this is like the 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 entrance to their to their mundane shop. Here to the side, there can be some sort of like uh, just a wall. Nothing too fancy, just a wall. That so people don't trample in their gardens. But from here, say there is a little door where they can access this. Uh, like here from the from the counter there's a door and a window where you can see the garden with with little flowers and shit going on so it can be like oh this is a wizard but they're also a herbalist so there's herbs and, and plants and shit growing up there and in that way this whole area is closed off so the only way into this place is through the door or by jumping slash skating the walls <clears throat> And if you like dragging all of this tower bit a little bit forward here, that's so this a smaller tower can be connected to the bigger tower by just a very inconspicuous tunnel here that looks very inconspicuous because it looks actually like the battlements, the walls that are closing off this tower. Instead of looking super connected, it just looks like it's delimitating a limit. I don't know if that word means anything to you guys. But anyway, so how about that? Sounds like a map, sounds like an idea. I like it. 
and I I I feel like it's, it's interesting. But because players are cra a crafty bunch, and they can come up with all sorts of bullshit shenanigans and ways to bend the rules and and just go around the things you initially thought and to yourself like ah they will never think of doing this and I will certainly get them in my traps and they they, they go like can I do that instead and you're like well shit like for example what if for whatever reason they think of a way to fly <clears throat> And say this whole tower shenanigan here is completely inutilized in case they can fly. Like this tower that leads to the to the top of the wizard's tower, which you can only access by going in through the trapped tower. What if they can fly? They can go straight up to the top floor without fighting anyone or anything. And avoiding all traps. <clears throat> and you're like, well shit. How about that? So, uh, one one thing we can do, which is fairly simple, is just think: Ah, this top tower won't will have very hard e e exteriors, uh, so uh, you will need to tr truly besiege this tower to break it down. Uh, and there's no windows in there, so that way flying players can't get in there. But that feels like kind of bullshitty design. Like there has to be windows. Mm -hmm. Structural weaknesses, as the gaff would say. So throwing one window there feels like it's appropriate. Like a window in the front and a window in the back. Maybe not in the back even. So there is windows that they can get in through, but then there's some sort of alarm system going on that players, uh, if they go in through the windows, something happens and the wizard gets announced like, oh shit, someone's breaking into my, my property. Let's fuck them up. Uh, instead of, you know, being able to sneakily go up and around, uh, they get instantly notified that there are is people uh, up, up to sneaky shenanigans going on. <clears throat> and Tiger, hello there. Welcome to the stream. It says Doug make, making the maps that I am indeed. And yeah, Oni, to answer your pre previous question that wasn't even asked on the stream, I don't think we ever saved Tiger in XCOM 2. I don't remember what happened. Either I was losing the campaign way too hard or my game corrupted one or the other but uh we then never got around to saving tiger and the whole thing was lost <clears throat> and Ethan says yes level design is hard it is hard I think that with um With D&D, however, you get a little bit more freedom in level design, but said freedom is also weird, because the Arcury have more ways of breaking shit up. Because players can do stuff that you never thought of, unlike a, uh, an actual video game where most of their actions are constraint what you programmed into the game here on D&D there the possibilities for players to simply think of think of the unthinkable it's it's nuts <clears throat> also just a heads up you also don't need battle map uh, you don't need to make, go ahead and make maps unless you're planning on having battles there because most of these situations you can just solve in with some narrative Drawing maps is just in case you'll need a, like a very precise uh, placement and location of things for when battle occurs. 
And Kuhn says the joys of being a DM, your players might bypass all of these altogether somehow. Yes, that they will, they they will and they can, if they're <laughs> if they're smart enough. And Anya says your friend says in some D and D, some wizards and places are cursed, and some people can't do some actions due to the cursed area. Uh, and Tiger says we have done that, have we? Uh, he told you once that in the graveyard they walked in, that they walked by, they couldn't fly. Uh, that is an idea. That feels kind of cheap in a way though. Like, just completely go and deny uh, a thing you can do, like straight up go and say you can't do this anymore. For no reason, just like, ah, you could fly and bypass this whole thing, so the Ozex Machina, damn, you can't fly anymore. Feels a little bit cheap, to me at least. I feel like you could fly, but there's a risk to flying, like as soon as you start flying, you get above the fog, and therefore things start being able to see you very clearly, and they can shoot at you and try to bring you down. Stuff like that. But who knows? And Tiger says, dun dun dun, I died. I don't know that you died, actually. But yeah, since <laughs> I didn't get to finish our XCOM 2 campaign, theoretically everyone died. Actually, I think what happened is the game files got corrupted and the whole game stopped working. And I never got around to figure that out. Nathan says, if people try to fly on your tower, just place some gargoyles there. That could work too. That could definitely work. So, let's say instead, that just like the previous uh, tower that I made, there's actually a uh, kind of like a telescope going on here. That is on the window. So there's a side window with a big ass telescope, <clears throat> like a glass roof portion, because they're designer, designer wizards, because of course they are. So there's a portion of it that is made with glass, reinforced glass or some shit like that. Or just like straight up invisible barrier that is up through magical means, so sun comes in, but people can't come in. I don't know. So therefore there's a window, but you can't get in through that window because there's a big ass telescope in the way, and through here you just can't get in because magic is blocking that passage. Which is also good, in a way, because uh, we reduce the risk of defenestration tenfold by blocking in entrances and exits. So, actually I think... Say for example, if the wizard is here in the shop and suddenly some commotion happens on the top floor of their tower, they're gonna be like, oh shit, something's going on there. Uh, and they would want to get to their towers as fast as possible, but they wouldn't but they wouldn't go and spend a, a spell just teleporting up there. They could actually spend a spell teleporting, or they could just run up and get up there. Uh, fully loaded and whatnot, so I guess it in this battlement here. So say for example this tower here, you can actually access it. Uh, there's a door here in the front through where players could come in. And, right next to the staircase and just start going up but in this battlement here there's gonna be a hidden staircase that uh, leads uh, straight up into the last floor outside the tower that's so uh, the wizard has a faster way of getting up there Yeah, the wizard would have a faster way of getting 
up that tower without having to go through bullshit traps and whatnot. And yeah, I think that works. One thing I want to do first is just uh, flip <coughs> this map around. And think about this from a non-top-down perspective. So if we were to look at this whole situation, what we would be seeing is... Uh, you get a... You get a nice friendly wizard shop going on here. Uh, selling all sorts of, of goods and sundries that one might need. Very nice. And then on the back there's a big-ass tower going on. Those eccentric wizards with their dogdam towers uh, going on, and there's a big ass wall here where they are protecting their little garden. So, a little tree just to say there's a garden going on there. And then, here on the side, they have another tower, a smaller one ish, smaller ish, uh, because it doesn't have a, like a rooftop. The last floor is kind of open, uh, and there's a, a back battlement through where. Uh, one could transfer from one tower to the other. So if you come in from the front, this is more or less what you would see. You would have a... By seeing this... Actually, let, let's put in just a little small ass tower here. In this corner, just that, so we have a little bit of a team going on. Uh, this is what you would see coming in from, from the front. And this is what you would see battle map wise. And just because this wizard here is also a very crafty person, let's say there is also an underground level because everyone loves flipping underground the levels. So on top of this whole shot that they have going on, hidden in this pa secret passageway battlement, there's a, an underground floor with dungeons and shit. That we will think of... Uh, later. Or rather, let, let's think about it now. Um, I'm already being ridiculously generous with this area. Which I don't think I should, because the Oracle wouldn't have place to have a garden if you have an underground going on. So, the whole garden underground is off limits. All we have access to is the tower on the ground. The big tower on the ground. <coughs> and the floor area of the shop. <coughs> this is what our underground is limited to. <clears throat> because now, for example, this wizard can have like staff going in on their towers and the players go up there thinking, ah, that's where shit is hidden. But there's a head herring because all the, the good stuff is actually in the in the in the in the underground level. Uh, this is where the, the wizard would make their last stand it, if it came down to that. Because wizards are not the big fan of being defenestrated, if it comes to that as well. So they're gonna hide in the underground and... <clears throat> possibly have a escape route planned. Instead of just like backing away into a corner they can, can't possibly get out of. They can have some sort of escape plan, so like say... A <clears throat> In an underground tunnel that passes uh, beneath this outer outer wall. It's very very thin, but it comes out just outside of the property. Uh, yeah, in this tower here. This is a small tower uh, has a very hidden, super inconspicuous passageway. Uh, that is a way out of this whole whole danger situation. And it's like a one-way thing, so if they come out of through there, it collapses and you can't use that anymore. Same thing going in. If the players somehow figured that figured that out. So this is our battle map. Let's actually go and draw in the possibility of the underground, which is completely unseen. So in the underground here there is a escape route. There's an underground uh, 
There's a little underground battle area that could be triggered the article. So how about that? There's much more, um, <clears throat> much better maps out there, more interesting, more creative, with more stuff going on. But for starters, I think that this one ha uh, is good enough. So let's call this Wizard Tower uh, One. Who knows if it? We need to for for our game that we're playing. I need to come up with like four more. <laughs> A wizard towers, so I'm just making one like randomly. And Tiger says that's a good idea about the gargoyles. And Nathan says gargoyles are cheap employees, they eat pigeons, so no salary needed. And they are pretty competent. Really? Let's check out what the. what the. what the. the, the monster's book says what is it called again Man monster manual there we go monster manual gargoyles where are they gargoyle uh the inanimate gargoyle that perch atop great buildings are inspired by these malevolent creatures of elemental earth that resemble grotesque fiendish statues a gargoyle lurks among among masonry and ruins as as a still as any stone sculpture and delights in the terror it creates when it breaks from its suspended pose as well as the pain it inflicts on its victims so it is a stone creature actually and it has an elemental nature so it doesn't require air food drink or sleep awesome <clears throat> they're not of a they're not of a very high challenge rating though that's kind of that's kind of sad. Uh, da, ba, da, ba, da. Da, da, da. Yeah, Gargoyles lore-wise are actually pretty good and they they like doing this whole oh, let's perch here and protect and and, and plan an ambush and shit. So yeah, lore-wise they work very well. <laughs> and Kun says our party doesn't have that spell yet, and I can learn the mansion door when he gets level 4 spells though. And then it says if we enter from the front, you get to play with the Berno in the back, wandering Berno beer salesman, selling beer when crossing paths with our adventurers. A metaphor says I hear you make good beer, Oni. And then it says and some items found on the floor, I mean found in stores. Whatever works really. So. Um, now that I have a sketch going on, let's uh, turn down the opacity of that layer and now start to actually drawing something with rulers going on. So because of how this whole place works, uh, we have a, a little house going on, but let's say that it is actually... Uh, I drew here a little house situation. But let's say that I actually want this to be uh, actually actual masonry. So it's not a wooden house and then a small ass stone fortress going on. Let's say that this is this whole thing is actually masonry. So these walls are going to be some thick ass walls with five uh, feet thickness going on. So walls thick like this and here we can actually go in a little a little bit extra here with these walls to close them off like so actually let me go and get the straight line 
uh, brush. Dang it. <laughs> so you can make like a little wall that extends and juts out like that. To give it a little bit of flavor when you see it from from this. And <clears throat> since this is a shop, and here we already have like very thick walls. I feel like a two, nah, two, two tiles door is. Way too much. Actually, I actually don't like that the thickness is like five feet. They're like one and a half meter thick walls, and that is just ludicrous. There's just no way you would go around making thick walls like this. I have made them before, but. I didn't know what was what back then. Let's start with the inner area. Yeah. For the inner area that sort of works, let's get a thick brush to draw in the walls. Get this going. And the reason here why I use such thick brush to do the walls is that the brushes are locked to the grid, so I can't draw outside of the grid. So I draw in with a, a thick brush, that's all, then I can go with a smaller brush and use the transparent color to just uh, draw in the middle. to erase out the excess thickness so we have some depth uh, have a, a feeling going on and this is an extremely cheap way of going around this but it is also so tremendously effective Like it's almost a sheet sheet for drawing maps and whatnot. We don't get the thick walls that I was hoping for, but we get thicker walls that actually feel like thick walls. So that's that's kind of cool. That's kind of neat. <sighs> and Sam says, "Greeting, lovely peeps. How are you all doing?" Uh, today is a holiday here, so you can watch the stream. Is it a holiday today? I thought the holiday was yesterday. Nonetheless, uh, welcome, Sam. Hope you have. Hope you're having a good one. <laughs> and Kuhn says, "I mean, it's a wizard's tower. Wouldn't a wizard want a tower that can withstand? Sorry, that can withstand magical explosions? Uh, I don't know." Theoretically, they would get a super a resistant tower, but also like who knows even. Uh ah, oh, there we go. So for the escape route, I'm gonna. Uh, throw in this tower here in the corner so when I, I wanted to have some thickness going on so let's put in a tree uh, tree by tree um, circle with some filling going on erase a part of this wall and move this over there So 
I'm kind of pondering where this would go. Where was this even to begin with? Oh, even on, on its even on its very basic way, it's already uh, it already extends way past these walls. It was born to be thick. So yeah. Alas, some cleanup work is always going to be required when working with this sort of stuff. Uh, but that's but that's all right. We already expect that. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this and the whole idea is that the outside wall was gonna the outside walls are supposed to be thicker because they're just walls they're not supporting anything so I'm gonna go back and redraw these walls here <coughs> actually yeah uh, redraw the outside walls to be much thicker than what they currently are Then the inner wall can be that thickness it already is. Never mind, I, I lied. I straight up lied to you guys. I'm gonna make it thick as well. But yeah, figuring out sizes and shit is is important so I go back to this thing here turn on the layer and get our uh, our transparent brush to erase the inner part of the walls again and we go around doing that And all of them walls. So there we go. We have the the front, the uh, the magic shop area. We have the outer wall, the yes, outer tower. I guess like this whole middle block here. This is almost like 15 by 15 feet. This is a big ass area. So it's a large area. Uh, for us to have ours, for the mage to have their escape route, so that's cool. <clears throat> and then we have this battlement here. Uh, let's make it just as thick as the first one. So, I'm actually gonna overshoot this because even though there's a tower going on there, I'm not gonna focus on drawing it just now. I'm gonna focus first. On the square bits, because I can do all the square bits at once and then focus on the non square bits later. There we go. All right. Hmm. 
actually this is would be an inner wall as well so let's go back and redo that so when we have these grids going on along with uh, this clip studio very capable tools drawing maps it's so incredibly easy and fast surprising how easy it is <clears throat> and Sam says well it extended here to Friday the holiday um, I see and Sam says I tried drawing how I see Summerlet but I ended up making him look at like an older version of himself on sleep deprived so Doug, uh, how excited ex exited are you for Dracos's one shot? Uh, I'm very, I'm very excited actually. Um, cause you know we have been playing D and D since February. I hosted at least twenty, uh, twenty five sessions, all within at least three hours so at this point I have played no joke more than a hundred hours of D&D &D, and yet I didn't get to play at all and when you're the DM uh, things are just completely different so it's weird so yeah I'm definitely totally looking forward to Draken's uh, Draken's uh, one shot because I'm excited to actually be a player and see things from the other perspective let someone else take the mantle of the DM and just enjoy the and just enjoy the sweet sweet sensation that it must be to not know what's around every corner but that's a joke even as a DM I don't know what's behind every corner because I make things up as I go that's the trademark of, of a DM it's not knowing what you're doing until you're doing it then playing it off like as if you know what you're doing here I'm actually ticketing at the outer wall of the tower just a little bit uh, I should be using the, the brushes to do that, like using the circle tool, I'm just going to doing that by hand, just because it's easier. And... Oni says, no bound ideas, fat burno. What? What do you mean, it's no bound? And Bones says, well, first, of, first and foremost, Bones shows up. Hello there, Bones. Welcome to the stream and Wolf Morning. And Sam says Bones is here. Ray Shep says Mage Tower. Yes. Uh, Mage Tower slash shop slash everything. And Metaphor says Bones is an internet celebrity now with his 3D image. And Tiger says Bones already knows everybody. And Bone says, honestly, I do. I'm a fandom OG. Heck yeah, do you know, like, the year 2000 when people were starting to uh, hook up their dial-up routers to, to the internet? Like, getting the whole family without a telephone line just so they could connect to AOL. And... What was around the internet at that time? I don't think there was anything going on in the internet at that time. But anyway, just checking out Google uh, results for, I don't know, whatever was going on back then. And ICQ. Uh, back then, Bones was already ma uh, out there in the internet uh, making his mark and making sure that everybody who knew what furry was also knew of him. So now, almost 20 years later, 
There is not a living soul that does not know who Bones is or have not yet seen Bones. And Sam says true, Bones has gone further beyond and become 3D. <clears throat> But he was already 3D before that. Because he was dog then delicious. So that's 3D is for you. And Bone says I will be a ruler and Meadow says to be honest after Doug made that blender stream I really want to try it myself and make a 3D werewolf. Oh my dog you totally should try it. Emphasis on the try because dog damn. Uh, I'll go and start another layer here that so I can start doing the tower because I don't want to fuck up this delicious walls I have made uh, Some some many years ago. <clears throat> I don't even remember when Precisely and exactly I saw someone doing 3d stuff Let me just count here real quick I want to no, this is bigger than it should have been. Should be 3 by 3. That sounds horribly small. Is that right? <clears throat> 2, 4, 6, 30, 30 feet in diameter wall. That would be 9 meters in diameter. Sounds as small for a tower. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. How about instead of six, bump it up to four? That sounds good. Kind of big, but also good. So that would be uh, uh, 20, 40 feet wide. Tower. <coughs> That would be that damn math. Uh, twelve meters. Twelve meters is actually quite a lot. So, sure. I'll leave it like that. But yeah, middle. Um, some many years ago, I saw someone doing some three D over there on the internet and then I was like I want to do 3D I found out that they had done their 3Ds through ZBrush which is a 3D sculpting program so <clears throat> you don't need to go and learn modeling and whatnot you can just go and ZBrush your way around uh, sculpting is quite fun it's quite easy and fuck that size of the tower I'm gonna make it small anyway and I learned that ZBrush is actually pretty neat. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it a irregular size. And I tried to get a hold and learn ZBrush, um, but ZBrush is so weird because the whole user interface is like nothing like you've ever seen before. It's crazy, even. I don't know who came up with that, but whoever came up with the brushes user interface did not. Wasn't woke. They were like, mm, sure, this makes sense to me. And only me. And therefore, it works. I mean, after a long ass while, you will get along with it and you'll learn it, but at first, at, for starters, it's, it's nonsense. <laughs> And Ray says, makes only wanting bones noise. Oh my dog. And Nathan says, 3D is fun. And Kuhn says, Blender is a free program too with plenty of resources to help you learn. Oni says, I'm scared to try new things. And Kuhn says, ZBrush is $500, I think. And yeah, user interface is wacky, that's why I like using Maya. And Nathan says, ZBrush interface interface is perfect. Only the rest of programs have weird UI. Yeah, tell me about it. 
all those unified user interface systems, making sure that every program looks the, the same. Just breaks their, their personality, man. Everything should look more unique. But nah, Blender looks atrocious at best. Which only makes it harder to learn, in all honesty. In case you're already used to, you know, looking at other programs and be like, I know what those symbols mean. Then you look at uh, ZBrush and you're like, what the heck? And actually, Kun, you're slightly wrong. ZBrush, while it does, costs $500. I think that's like the professional version. If I'm not mistaken, there's a user... Uh, a pleb user version of ZBrush that is cheaper actually. Not sure how cheaper, just that it, it is cheaper. Uh, actually, no, never mind. I think it's a uh, hundred and fifty dollars. They do have a monthly thing going on. I don't know how the monthly thing is. If it's like five dollars a month, or if or if it's ten or fifteen dollars a month, but they do have a monthly subscription thing going on, which is fun. All right, so now we have the towers going on. I'm gonna erase some things here, probably from the shop itself, to make sure that the tower fits. And Wolfie Kung Chu, hello and welcome to the stream. How are you going? How are you doing today? And thank you so very much for that delicious, incredibly, incredibly delicious follow. Welcome to our party. How are you doing? Yep. So, bat actually, I'm gonna copy the layer of the towers because the ground level towers they need no battlements the upper tower levels they're gonna have battlements going on so that's another thing but anyway middle as i was saying i started learning well i saw someone doing zbrush now that i think about it i think it was the people that are working, have been working for the last decade on Crowfall uh, RPG MMO game. Uh, has been on development for quite a while, so maybe check that out someday. Who knows? Uh, I saw one of their videos where they were modeling a character on ZBrush, and then I started seeing all sorts of people. Uh, popping up with like I made this character in ZBrush I was like you know what I'm gonna give that a try and then I did and I modeled the character it took me forever and then I watched a lot of uh, development videos I mean actually uh, tutorial videos on ZBrush to learn how that tag them thing works and then I learned and I made a character and I was like awesome then I tried to rig it and to my dismay I learned <laughs> I learned that I made a character with way, way too many polygons and it was impossible to rig it and move it because it had, it was too powerful for my computer to handle. So I said, well then, guess I'm not gonna have that going on. And then I started to learn that there's all sorts of techniques when when doing the brush and a way to do things and then it started to get into like technical terms and whatnot that are kind of tricky and hard and made me be like eh, I don't want to learn the brush anymore then I learned of blender and how it was uh, for free and it was simpler in some ways and I said you know what I'm gonna try and learn blender then I started learning blender I bought in. Uh, I bought this time around an online course on Udemy on how to Blender, and then I learned how to Blender, and it was very fun. Until a friend, I, uh, there's a friend of mine who is a amateur game dev. I showed him like, oh, look at this, 
look at this bland ass house thing I made on, on Blender and he was like oh cool that's a nice 3D but Blender eh Blender is a plebs uh, program software thing if you wanna get into the industry and whatnot you need to use a professional program like Maya and whatever and that just made me like hell and I said eh why hmm, why bother learning Blender if that's not what anyone uses and then I stopped trying to learn Blender. Time's quick. Skip. A year later, I... Tried my hand at Blender again, and now I'm truly doing it. I bought another online course, studied it a little bit. After learning a couple things, I decided, you know what, let's try it. And now it actually worked. And Bone says conflict. Uh, Lucas says bom dia, bom dia para você também, Lucas. Seja bem-vindo. Como você está hoje? And Nathan says ZBrush Core is cheap and powerful. If you think about uh, about being a sculptor, you, you should invest a little. Uh, you totally should. Although Blender has a sculpt mode as well. In fact, one of the things that made me that started making me think like Blender is actually pretty good uh, was a video I saw of a industry professional guy who posted a YouTube video saying like why you should do sculpts every day like every day do a speed sculpt separate like half an hour or a whole hour and every single day do a sculpt on Blender of whatever just just do it sculpt things and apparently some sort of challenge or some sort of like uh, initiative that they do where people just go and start doing uh, blender sculpts to practice and get better at it and those are pretty dang cool and I said oh my dog that's awesome and I did not know blender had so so good cap capacities for sculpting and lo and behold it does And Wolf Kun, Wolf, Wolfie Kung Chu says, I'm good, saw you on your recommended list, list, so I decided to check you out, but I just woke up. How are you? I'm doing good today, this Friday. I'm working on some D&D uh, &D maps, not making that much progress, but that's alright. How about you? How are you doing today, in this lovely ass Friday? Hopefully we're having a good one. And I'm haphazardly putting these walls over here. Haphazardly because they they're not aligned with the lines, which means they are dangerous. Dangerous how? Well my little inquisitive friends, let me tell you a little bit about how dangerous it is. In uh roll twenty when you uh, um, you have a character token going on, <clears throat> and what happens with that character token is that it only moves like in those squares, so it can't move like in middle in between a square because of how the grid works. And the problem with uh, putting walls in the middle of a square is that theoretically your character can be like this inside half inside the wall and half outside the wall so doing things differently would be good practice <coughs> just a heads up so what I think I'm gonna do is make these walls differently and put them here although that looks very odd But what else can I do? In fact, uh, I don't see why we need to conform to the to how the tower works. So we can. This is a word of freedom and creativity. We can do whatever. So if I say I want a wall over here, there's no dog damn body who can tell me there can't be a wall there. But anyway. Shadow Cat says, heads up, Monster Hunter Squad arrived. Oh my dog. Shadow Cat, 
Welcome to the stream. How are you and yours doing today? It is lovely Friday. How was your stream? What sort of monsters were you hunting? Were you playing Monster Hunter World? Or Global Poachers League 2018? How was that? Hope you had a great one. Oh, alright. <coughs> And Sam says, oh my dog, Shadow is here. And Bone says, I only have one dog emote, or dog emote rather. Well, what do you know? It's alright to say both things, because as it happens, Doug, I mean dog is another short uh, nickname for Douglas. Instead of saying... Instead of saying Douglas, you can always say Doug or Dog. Both works. Egg. But. Uh, between the things that I will say. Alright, so something like this looks <clears throat> a little bit more uh, in tandem with like architecture, how it works, and it doesn't look so weird and so odd from a visual standpoint. Looks rather cool actually, a, to a tower like this. And Nathan says, I use ZBrush and Blender every day in your job, they are great. Oh yeah, they are great. It's just this friend of mine was being a jackass. And shutting me down when I, when I was getting excited with Blender. But that's not here nor there. Blender is fun, it's pretty good. And true learning Blender. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna copy this layer as well. For the upper level towers. Uh, what was I saying? So I bought a, a course, another Udemy course on how to blender. And I learned how to blender. <clears throat> Apparently it's pretty simple, you just open up the top lid, you put stuff in, close the lid, uh, hold the, the, the lid on top and press uh, the button at which speed you want to blend things in. And then you blend stuff. The only tricky part actually is washing it if the blades aren't uh, removable, but that's what you get for buying a very cheap ass blender. But if we're talking about Blender, the software, the 3D modeling program, uh, it is also pretty simple once you get used to it. It takes a little getting used because as someone who grew up learning only, only how to do uh, 2D art, when you transition from 2D art into 3D art, it's kind of a kind of a shock of culture and experiences and whatnot. You don't know what's what, what you expect, and things don't behave the way you expect them to. So it is a big ass cultural shock on, whoa, this is how those things work? Damn. It takes a while to get used to it, but after you do, it's all... Uh, it, things that are being flowing, they, they just things just start like connecting in your mind. It's uh, I would say that it's kind of like coding. In a way, after a while, it stops being so much uh, about uh, creativity. Like, what am I trying to do? 
it starts being more logical thinking of like I have this set of tools and there's this problem that I have to solve what is the best tool to solve this problem and then you start thinking like that and then blender starts to make sense but anyway like I was saying took me a long as while to figure out blender but once I did uh, things started moving forward um, actually last few weeks I have been doing those 3d models that you guys probably watched here on stream uh, I tried my one of our first attempts at doing bones dabbing I was like you know what by now I have made uh, through a few of those online courses classes I, I'm confident with my skills in blender enough to try and try something out so I started modeling like a blocky character just because I was like you know what I never did this before let's try and learn by doing live here on the stream because why not that's the most entertaining for people is when I try to figure shit out in real time. And then I started trying to figure it out in real time. Nothing worked. Blender crashed a few times. But after a long, long, long while, things started making sense. And I managed to make a little uh, boxy character going on. And I managed to, to rig him and, and get him to dab. And then Bone said uh, to model him, and I made it a model of Bones by changing their he the head into something resembling Bones. And then it worked. We had a dab in Bones, and it was fun, and everybody, and everybody loved it. Then... Uh, after I learned how to do that, I tried to learn how to sculpt characters. Then I spent uh, some days on my own, just like fiddling about with these sculpt tools, and I managed to learn how to sculpt characters. I learned a few things here and there on my own, and then uh, the other day I decided, you know what, fuck this, I'm just gonna go and start trying to learn how to blend. And my music stopped playing. Let's play that again. And then, um, and then one day I decided, you know what? Not by now I have enough knowledge to try something out. So during this this stream that I made earlier this week, I was like, you know what? Let's try and make bones again. And then. I went through the same steps I knew. I knew how to sculpt, I learned how to rig, and I tried to do all those things and it worked in the end. We had a, a, we had a nice little bones going on and we made him dab. It was fun and everybody laughed. And then after the stream was done I had this, this bones model just sitting around and I said, you know what, I want to try and do more. I want to give him his trademark goggles and his uh, his black tank top and plopping some colors in that bad boy and I tried to do that and it was a little tricky but in the end it worked It was also involved a lot of me learning things by following, looking around, following some tutorials and kind of just trying things out until something stuck and I learned how to do stuff. Mm. Now I know why I shouldn't have done this tower like this. It is problematic now because... The center of the tower is actually here. So if I want to make staircases, they're gonna be tricky. Oh man, I fucked up. 
I majorly fucked up. Well, it can still be salvaged, so let's not despair. But yeah, all in all, I fucked up. <laughs> oh well. It's still not too late to go back and redo this tower, but I guess we could also just keep going with it. It's not too bad that I can't salvage this. So let's go. But yeah, all in all, um, things I do recommend is that middle, if you wanna try and start with blunder, uh, that you set your expectations low. It is a completely different medium from 2D, uh, traditional or digital 2D art, uh, even though you may have spent quite a while uh, drawing uh, made uh, digital drawings, it's uh, still something completely alien to go into 3D. Not to say that it's impossible to learn, just that it will take time, all your previous knowledge, none of your previous knowledge will uh, apply in that. Sculpting wise, the only thing that you can like really transfer is uh, your knowledge of anatomy. Other than that, you will have to learn, relearn everything. Which sucks. But that's that. Gonna have the, the outer tower door here. Just one just eyeballing. Really. Something that feels like five feet. And another thing I totally definitely recommend is that you follow some sort of tutorial online or otherwise. Because trying to trying to learn by headbutting it until you do something whilst a valid method it's com it's very slow and, pr and you'll be more prone to frustration fits than if you were to follow some guidance so yeah definitely look into uh, some online courses like I said there is the whole thing slash people at Udemy who have expensive-ish courses but they are always and I mean it always having like 95% discounts so check that out it's interesting and then and then yeah other than that it just requires a lot of dedication and spending your free time trying to learn that thing And Kuhn says, if you can learn Blender using other 3D modeling programs, would be easy. That it would. I actually, I tried using before uh, other 3D programs when I was like, you know what? Since I gotta learn a professional program, let's try and learn a professional program. <clears throat> so I tried to learn Maya. Because from what I had heard, Maya and 3D Max are uh, AutoCADs. Autodesk's uh, big programs for 3D modeling, but Maya is more f character oriented and 3D Max is more uh, mechanical design oriented. And Maya for me was just like nightmarish, I could not understand that program at all. 3D Max, though, even though it's exactly the same program. Somehow I had a better time understanding that. And I started following a little tutorial on how to 3DS Max. And I made a little a little a little thingy going on with that. Which was fun. But even then I was like, eh, this program is kinda weird and I don't like it very much. And then I got into Blender and Blender was like, oh my dog, this is so much better.
but yeah, in a way, learning 3ds Max, a little bit of it actually, uh, allowed me to have a, a little bit of a more expertise with how 3D modeling works when I got into Blender. But Blender by itself is easy enough that you can... Uh, that even without any prior 3D no uh, modeling knowledge, getting into Blender is pretty easy and accessible. And Taroka says, Dengaroos, troublesome wallaby-like creature. What? Hello there, Taroka. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? And Nathan says, Blender is pretty pro right now. That it is. Nanya says, tell us how, who the frick it, this person is. I'ma shut them down 10,000% of the time. What? And Rain Chef says, what program is this? This is Clip Studio Paint. It's pretty cheap uh, drawing program. You can get it pretty cheaply. I think there's also a trial available, probably, which you can try out. It's the program I use to draw in. And Nathan says, a new Blender 2.8 have super improved uh, UI. That it does. And Bad Aim Kun says, will it blend? That is the question. Don't, don't, don't put iPhones into Blenders, Kun. Amido says, I feel some good mythical morning vibes right now. Really? What, what do you mean by that? And Bone says, inspired by Debs. You know, Debs have... You, you, you can mock Debs all you want, but they have inspired me to do amazing things. Such as a 3D Bones. And Mido says, yeah, I will probably check up Udemy. I bought a few courses there already. Oh my dog, that's awesome. Uh, there, is, there is this channel thing uh, on Udemy. Uh, what's it called again? GameDev.tv. Those guys, they have a lot of game dev courses going on. They have a Blender course that I, that I that's the one I'm currently trying to learn. They also have a. They also have a Unity course and programming courses. They have a lot of courses if you want to get into game dev. But the Blender course, even though it's kind of slightly oriented towards game dev, you can still uh, get a lot of bang for your buck there. Even if you don't plan on going the game dev route with it, it's uh, still worthwhile. All right, now this is the time to start plopping down some stairs in here. In this bad boy. Let's get another layer going. The middle of the stair will be here, so let's. Like we had previously said, our stairs will be. They will be doing a full uh, one, whatever. However many degrees that is since I plopped down our stair in here I don't think uh, it's like aligned anymore it might be who knows even actually it might be who knows even so um, let's keep in mind that this much here is the size of a stair so that's Two, four, six, seven squares. All right. What about if I go two in? I make the it like this. Now I erase the outer part. There's the middle here, and we have a stair. Lovely. Now let's just make that, but with a smaller brush now. Because that one is a very thick brush. All right. So, <clears throat> as far as making staircases go, I don't remember uh, what sort of ruling I was doing for them. Actually, I think I'm gonna do this inner circle of the stair a little bit bigger. Albeit, it being cool to have a long staircase, I feel like 
the staircase should also evoke the feeling of it's dangerous. So let's get a thick circle going on, then get a very small circle. Have a transparent color going on. So we have a railing. It's a stone staircase with a railing. Feels very dark, soulsy. With this whole. It's precarious at best. But it's what we have. And Nathan says, I really do not like Autodesk stuff. They're buggy and overpriced. And you have a good comparison. Each graphic in your studio uses a different program. Really? By each graphic, do you mean like each person who does... Uh, who does... Graphical stuff? Or what do you mean? By that. Anywho, let's think a little bit about stair logistics here. So this is five feet with each uh, step of the stair, the characters. Um, the way I like to do my stair is like each, each cell of a stair uh, is five by five feet. Uh, as per the, the rule books <clears throat> but I like to think of them as perfect triangles as well so each uh, five five feet uh, tile cell block also counts as five feet of elevation so if this is a staircase if you go from one block to another it means that you went up five feet I don't know if that make, makes sense but anyway uh, so we have the first step of the staircase, let's consider that. And then we have the next step, so that's five, the next step, that's another five, then the next step, that's another five, then five, and five, five, five. So, <coughs> in total, this staircase goes up 10, 20, 35 feet. So just this circular staircase here is already, they are expected height for the tower this tower here so i don't know if having a full blown staircase like this works let's do some math okay google tell me how much is 35 feet two meters that is 10 meters mm. Hecky, 10 meters is pretty dog damn tall. Like a floor normally is... A house floor is normally 3 meters high at most. <clears throat> and that's like a really, really, really high ceiling. Normally it's 2.5 meters. 270 normally. But tr 3 meters is already too tall, so 10 meters, that's crazy. But... Because this is a wizard's tower... Wizards are, you know, just a crazy bunch. I suppose we can have, like, two more levels going on, so we can have another... <clears throat> we can have another tower another level of this tower that goes yet another 10 meters high and then the last level with half of that <clears throat> so this staircase here will take you 35 uh, feet upwards let's just uh, draw in some divisions here for the stair it's gonna use the straight line tool <clears throat> To 
and these stairs here are completely out of out of a uh, proportion this is stair steps but the, their idea is not to be in, purpo in proportion their idea is to be like each tile that the player can go up and play on the road training or whatever so what the heck we have we now we have the next floor dog them For the next floor, we will not need the bigger tower. We'll only be using the smaller tower. Because like we previously discussed, the main tower uh, has no direct um, connection to the, to the last floor. The other way, uh, dang it. The other way to go from the to go from floor one to floor two, pretty much, is through this other side tower here. Because those weird wizards are very eccentric. And that's what they do when they have the power to go ahead and build them dog them towers. But anyway. So, middle, uh, as I was saying, it's doing this whole 3D, learning 3D and getting going with it. It's kind of tricky at first. It takes a while to get used to it, but don't dismay yourself. Uh, once you start learning it, uh, it, it might feel like you're not making a whole lot of progress. It might feel like it's not going smoothly. But don't give up. If at first it feels like you're not uh, managing to uh, do stuff, uh, keep trying. The 3D, uh, unfortunately, is a little bit tricky by nature, but it is totally and definitely learnable. So I'm I want to place this tower here, like map wise, uh, image file wise. I want to place it there, mostly because uh, I don't expect players to go around back, because if they do, it's kind of tricky. If they go like ah, I want to be like here, uh, near this tower, and then I have to reveal the map, and as in revealing the map, I also reveal this tower. So I'm just hoping to dog that, it, that the players don't decide, I'm, I want to sneak behind the tower. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But anyway. So we need now to go and have this other level of the tower going on in here. Which is the actual last level of the tower. Uh, actually, no, never mind. Let's uh, delete that. Because the last level of the tower can be this. Straight up this. Uh, yeah. So try to find a place to put that in. All right. So it's a little bit like smack dab snuck tight in there. A little bit too close to the other tower graphics. 
but luckily it fits. Which is good and very economic because when, you know, when dealing with maps I like to keep things as tightly as possible because the smaller the map size the less shit players have to load on their computers and depending on where you are you don't have like a gigantic map you have to keep like scrolling around and about to find the next place you want to go to. Uh, like in our campaign there is the map of the underground uh, level of the manor and uh, it's a big ass map so scrolling through that is it's kind of annoying for everyone involved so avoiding those things is a good idea let's call this the stairs and Nathan says, yes, graphic is a person who does who does graphics. I see. Amido says, well, I will try my best. I hope I won't get discouraged too fast. Uh, you might, because it is tricky, but the trick is true. Even if you do get discouraged, keep trying. It is, after all, tricky. So, next step is getting the stairs from the bottom floor, moving them, well, the bottom floor of the tower thing. They look a little odd, but that's alright. Let's uh, copy this layer of the stairs. Select it with the select shenanigan. Move it over here. One thing I like about the select shenanigan is because since we have like grid, snap to grid ena enabled, uh, it really snaps to the grid so our selection is, uh, is on the grid. And there's just no way that we are going, that we're getting the placement of any of this wrong. So there we go, we have a staircase that starts going up and then here we have another place with the staircase. Actually, just for kicks, let's have that uh, stair. Actually, let's uh, select the staircase, flip it around, move it over here. All right, and then. Um, Just so this style here specifically is in a better position. Uh, disable snap to grid. Have to leave early today. Look forward to replay later. Oh my dog, shooting sure metaphor. <clears throat> Thanks for stopping by nonetheless and uh, sticking around for as long as you did while I talked about 3D and D&D maps and all that. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed nonetheless. And I uh, <clears throat> look forward to the finished version. The last hour is when the true magic happens when I start uh, polishing things and it really really become something else but other than that thank you so very much for stopping by and thanks for those delicious generous cheers of yours I'll be seeing you later and Ray you said Draken sneaks behind the tower with a stealth of 30 and Oni says delete Oni why do you say that Oni we're not gonna delete you what the hell are you talking about So, what I'm gonna do here, just for kicks, is get a gradient, a gradient erase. I'm gonna uh, lock opacity. I don't know that I should, but anyway, I'm going to go and uh, do it like this. 
the other way around. That's so the staircase it, it kind of vanishes as it goes. That's so we truly get the effect that these stairs are, you know, going up. We are, and we normally do achieve that with colors, but this time around I'm being fancy and doing that with not colors. Because ideally, the idea is that the further higher you go in here, uh, this there's a big ass gap here in the middle, and if you fall down that, it's gonna be some some some. There's going to be some bones breakage happening, which everyone probably wants to avoid. Now we're gonna have uh, staircases up here. I shouldn't be moving things so haphazardly like this, so I'm gonna go back and do this the right way, which is by locking a uh, snap to snap to grid, moving it around it so it is snapped to the grid, and so we know for sure that that's in the right place. Then copy, do the same thing we did for this star here. Um, actually, no, never mind. We won't De delete that. Um, for this one, I'm gonna do things differently. The staircase ends here. So you have like one tile. To get out of the stair and then you have tiles to go do whatever and this whole floor here is covered with like uh, floorboards and stuff so from this floor up here there is actual a uh, floor so you won't fall down <laughs> into the tower so you're good Here is a hole, here isn't. And then, Dazzly, you're on the last, uh, you're on the last floor. Let's merge these layers, that's so we don't have to keep dealing with stairs in 300 layers. This is the top floor of the tower, this is the middle floor. Let's reorganize those layers so it's easier to play around with them. And the trick here is that. As I said previously, hmm. uh, there's a like a secret passage from this place to this place, so even if there isn't, like, sure, whatever. Uh, on the top floor, though, we're gonna have a delicious little passage going on in here. Through here. So after climbing this, all these stairs, you're finally on top of the tower, and from there you can access the uh, actual wizard's tower. And then you get in the wizard's tower and there's all the wizardry things. Such as we discussed before, there's a telescope looking outside. Uh, in that first tower I drew a while ago, I did also throw in a telescope. I don't know why I'm throwing in telescopes on this for these wizards. I mean, what even are they looking at? I may get that the putting telescopes around makes them seem like they're super studios and they're researching the cosmos and whatever, but really, what is there to observe about the stars? That would help them with their magics. 
It's not like, ah, I saw that star and therefore my magic powers become stronger. That's not how magic works. Or is it? Who knows even. Nonetheless, putting up telescopes kind of helps people get a sense of, ah, they're magicians. Wizards and whatnot. I guess. I don't know. In case, in, in case you couldn't tell, I'm winging most of this. And by now, I'm also using uh, the straight, uh, the straight, uh, straight line tool to draw a telescope really quickly. Don't want to freehand that one. Could freehand, but I don't want to. Don't want to freehand. Uh, Metaphor says learn stuff every time, and Bone says I support only deletion. No, no Bones. Don't delete only. The hell. Why would you do that? And Sam says I support a non deletion of only, and Regis says they use telescopes to look at the naked bones. That's so. Hmm. Nonetheless, I feel like our first tower was much more inspired than this one. This one feels like just a... Doesn't feel as inspired as the first tower we made. Actually, let's use the layer of the telescope to also go ahead and make the doors. Same things with the... Same thing with the doors, just make a very, a very thick line, erase the middle, and there you go, we have a door. Amido says, well, time for you to go, fur meat gonna start soon, oh my dog, another fur meat, going through so many of those lately. Well, sure thing, Amido, hope you and your... Uh, you and your Polish friends enjoy your uh, your f fur meat, and that you guys have a great day. And also, watch out for the summer. Like I imagine that over there, I'm not sure, but uh, I would imagine that over there in Poland, it it is pretty hot due to summer and other things. So watch out for the heat, make sure to stay well hydrated and if possible even bring some water for the for for the first rooters that's so they don't collapse on the floor. And have fun. And Sam says by me though, hope you have a great day. And Oni says everyone wants to delete you. I don't. Sam doesn't. Nobody wants to delete of you. You're the one who wants to delete you. You're the one who came up with the idea. So what the hell, honey? Are you trying to provoke some infighting here? Because I won't have none of that. Alright, so all in all we have a delightful wizard tower going on here. Looks good, it works, there's a whole lot of going on here. I like it, except that I don't really, because I feel like the, 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 the thickness of the shop and the outer walls is kinda okay like one fit thick it's like just a wall of bricks this is not impressive but it's alright but I feel like the tower itself should be much thicker because it's a dog damn tower I feel like it should be thicker and it ain't thick so it kinda makes me sad 
And I wanna go back and redo the thickness of the tower, but it's... We, we went through so much already. Is it worthwhile? To go back and redo this? Maybe it is. Let's give it a try. Real fast now. No need, stop it. You with your deletion talk. Oh, okay, I see now why throwing thick, thick tower walls would not be a nice idea. Look at how thick they look. Like, dog them. This is way too thick. But in a way, it's not that bad. Like four, six, eight, ten. And the inner side is like two, four, six, eight. Eh, sure, that works. I like that size. As for the smaller tower here, how about uh, two, four, six and a half? About eight. Uh, so the inner side is six, the other side is eight. So two, four, six, eight. Yeah. I like this new towers and tower thicknesses. I support all that. Okay, so real quick now. I changed my mind about the towers, so let's try and redo all of this as quick as we can. Uh, so do you remember when I was talking about fur planning? Because I don't. But that's the, the, the benefits of doing that. Alright, so... Let's get this tower here. Uh, copy it, paste it, move it over here. Try and find a place where it fits. Where it fits and doesn't look weird. So I guess that over there. Same thing for the bigger tower now. Does anything just slide to the side? Over there, that 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 ought to do it, or maybe not. Maybe slide it to the side one tile over. Uh, yeah. Still, kind of is a little bit off. There's more tower to this side than to this side. Yeah. Sure, why not? There's a tower over there. Now to the rest. Uh, one reason why I'm why I'm redoing the whole tower is also because I don't like the idea of the staircases being as high as they are, and I wanna have smaller staircases going on. So let's copy those into the same layer. Throwing battlements again. Uh, make it a 20 thickness. Actually, let's have a thick, thick, thick battlements. Uh, 
By thick battlements, I mean like one. Uh, one square thick walls. It expands the size of the thing so much. But it ought to be good in the long run, I guess. Right, so there we go, we have now battlements. And they're pretty dog damn big. Who knows why? They're just big. And now that we have all of this going on, we can redo the bottom floor uh, with that in mind. We can even move them around to better. Uh, accommodate for this change in plans. And things are just gonna look better. Anywho, how are you guys doing? How are you guys holding up right there? We've we've been at this for uh, three hours now. It's nearing lunchtime. I don't wanna know how are you guys doing? In this delicious Friday that we're having. Okay. Make another copy of this floor here. Floor plans. Move it over there. Erase some things. Most things. Actually. Move the walls into a new layer. Let's call a folder actually. Let's call these walls so I can copy that faster. For the tower here, I want to delete this wall here in the tower. <coughs> That's that for the inner part of this whole thing here. Delete these outer walls where we won't be needing them. For this, we can delete those walls. Nathan, you're sculpting new pants. That's that's fun. The, uh, the this other day when I was doing the whole model of bones, um, after I was done with the model, I thought now it would be a nice time for me to go in and throw in some clothes on bones. And that when it, that's when it hit me that I don't know how to do that. After a whole lot of deleting, I realized something that should not have been deleted. When I was uh, when I was doing the clothing for bones, and I, I realized I don't know how to do clothing in in, in Blender, that is in 3D. And I kept thinking, how do I do that? Super, super, super odd. Trying to figure out. Uh, oh, with the tools I had at hand, how to make clothing, how to make that work. <coughs> it took me a while and took me some working a little bit of magic, but eventually I figured it out. But I definitely didn't do it through sculpting, I made it through uh, some blender modifiers.
<sighs> and Sam says, I'm happy that I can call, that I can, that I can, one of your streams again. It has been a while. Oh, I can see, there you go. And Oni says, your fashion stuff sucks. Why do you say that, Oni? I disagree with you. <clears throat> and Nathan says, I make more variants for your Minotaur player character, and clothes are hardcore. But you can use dynamic clothes projection, like a Marvelous Designer, or if you have some Blender add-ons. I don't. Because those things are tricky and I don't know how to work with them. And uh, we're gonna have this thin ish inner walls. They should do it. And now I'm just gonna use the same layer to, to draw everything. Because this point there is very little use separating things by layer since I'm drawing the same element pretty much. <laughs> Which is the walls and the battlements. And then the walls of the shop. Anyway, Oni says, I mean, it just does. What kind of clothing has a color scheme of three shades of dark gray, red, and gold? That is a good scheme, actually. There's nothing wrong with that. Why would you think that there's something wrong with that? And Nathan, you sent in a video. The heck is this? Oh my god, there was an error. Try again later. I will. Two seconds later. Let me see about that. Oh, damn. One hour long video. Uh, introduction to Marvelous Designer for 3D Artist. In this one hour video tutorial, which should teach you everything you need to know about using Marvelous Designer. We cover the tools you need and also how to make them make, how to model a t shirt in Marvelous Designer. Navigate, change to Maya, change Gizmo, Alt LMB, rotate, Alt RMB, zoom, Alt middle MMB, pan, tools, polygon tools, split tool, curve tool, transform pattern, edit pattern, quick tack, 
<clears throat> that is interesting. I have already actually fiddled with uh, Marvel's designer in the past. It's uh, it's weird. But it's fun, true. I wouldn't say necessarily that um, well, I, I'm not like a clothes designer in any way. But it is it is pretty pretty interesting. I have already fiddled with Marvel's designer in the past. And it's kind of odd-ish at first, but it's pretty dope. Uh, what you can do with it and how quick and easy and fast you can get some clothes going on with it, and how detailed too, because like <laughs> clothes behave like clothes, and that's 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 awesome. Um, but yeah, mm -mm. the way I am doing is like not at all like uh, the way I'm like going about 3D modeling the things I have been 3D modeling. Uh, it's like there's no particular way I should be doing it like the way I'm trying to do it, but I have been trying to avoid. Uh, using like things I didn't pay for like I'm not gonna be using add-ons I didn't pay for I'm not gonna use programs I didn't pay for and uh, Marvel's designer is a very expensive program for me to go and get just for that just for what it can do uh, So yeah, thus far I have been trying to only use what I have at my disposal that I have paid for and since Blender is free, just Blender on its own. But yeah, maybe I should just be like, eh, and start fiddling with, uh, start fiddling a little bit with Marvel's designer and see what sort of amazing things I can do with it. So there we go. We have this whole um, first floor done again. This time with much thicker walls, which are absurdly ridiculous with their thickness. But looks much more like a tower than it did before. Before it looked like a eh. It's like it's a it's a wooden tower at best. Now it looks like a real stone tower that could be defensible and completely impervious to all sorts of abuse from outside and even from inside. And one of the cool things about it that is more or less part of the reason why I went and remade this whole thing is that now I can make a much uh, a smaller staircase. It won't go as much as the other stair I made previously. Like it's still gonna be a staircase, it's still gonna go high, but this time it looks a little bit better. But Doug, did you go and make a whole staircase thing just Did you go and redo the whole tower just so you could fix the staircase? Yes, I know. 
I made it for many reasons. But being able to fix the staircase and make it a little bit more like... Uh, oh dang it. I drew the staircase in the same layer as the, as the whole thing itself. But that's alright. Uh, not really though, but eh. But yeah, being, being able now to go and do the staircase in a... Give a little bit more patience and thought in mind. Uh, it's only gonna benefit everyone, everybody really. And because we here have just recently uh, bought food and we are waiting for it to arrive, uh, I am afraid I will be cutting the stream a little bit shorter today. But no worries about that. So uh, let's put in just like six steps on these stairs. So it's three, six, that's 30 feet. Because it's. Yeah. Uh, now it works a little bit better. It's more visually appealing. And it makes a little bit more sense from my perspective. Uh, just have another layer here for the doors. But in short here, uh, this is gonna be like a big ass space for for such a small door. Now we can get on with the other floors. And this side tower here, I can put it on to the side on its own, just so it won't be bothering anyone. What the hell happened? Um, delete the Batmans, I won't be needing them. Delete the main tower, I won't be needing it either. Put back that tower there and move this over here. Except that now I moved it out of place, so I completely lost the alignment on that. There we go. A little bit better. Pick up this tower and move it here. That's so it is between the other two maps. Alright. It doesn't fit as best as the previous map we drew, but it still uh, it still works. That's all we needed from it. Okay. So now that we have this, all we need to do now is draw stairs in here, stairs in here, following the same scheme as before, then draw and furnish the top tower uh, draw some passageway here, maybe start thinking about the whole underground area, which I had said about, talked about previously, or maybe even discard it fully. <coughs> uh, 
And... And yeah, then this is not gonna be done here art-wise, but eventually also start thinking about like how to populate the whole tower with traps, perhaps with some enemies as well, like nature, natural lines of defenses uh, against invading ex adventurers and explorers and whatnot. Great opportunities for the aforementioned gargoyles and whatnot. But the one thing I want to do before we're done here is import this to roll 20 just so we can see how that would look. God damn it. How this wizard tower would look in roll 20. Uh, because the one, the one, the only single thing that is truly concerning me here is the whole matter about the stairs. This tower here will be two doors. This into the wizard tower will be one door. Actually, never mind, it will be two doors. What if the wizard needs to move in like big uh, mechanical apparatus in there? They need a large door. Gotta get large doors for our wizards. So, one thing I'm thinking about too. for this campaign here that I'm doing is that uh, there are wizards but of course there is uh, but that also each wizard they have some sort of like a thing going on with them and therefore well by a theme I mean like a thing about them I'm not gonna be too spoilery about that so I won't talk about what this thing is but I also want their dungeons to be built in a way that kind of fits said theme, especially uh, with the last uh, the last dungeon I made. There was a theme going on. If you guys were here for that stream, you saw what that theme was, and you guys were probably like, "Whoa, what the shit!" Doug, this theme is bad. And the idea of these teams is that I want to build their dungeons around that team and have it uh... Yeah, save it over there Gonna be saving this uh... 1500 by 1550 uh, I want these dungeons to be built in this way that so there is um... Well, just as so though there's something going on with them. Um, like each of these wizards tower feels a little bit more customized and feels more unique. And Nathan says, "What is this music on the on the background? Uh, apparently, it is uh, some weird Polish words I don't understand. Uh, it's Civilization Five soundtrack. I'm playing the leaders' the themes. Uh, this apparently is the is the theme of Consul Casimir the Third of Poland. Casimir's is." Uh, Peace team was playing and now it's playing the war team. Because I like. God damn it. Well, <laughs> apparently I got done fucked up. Um, 
Dang it. I wanted to go and add this uh, this map into Roll Twenty that is that so I could show it to you guys. But apparently, I run into the problem that, uh, like I said before, um, Roll Twenty has a limited amount of space. Um, for players to upload files into and it's a very small space I'm not sure how much it is but I think it's like 20 megabytes and apparently I exceeded that by throwing in music <laughs> so now I have absolutely no space left to put in images and whatnot So I wanted to show uh, you guys how this dungeon would look in there, but apparently I can't. Don't have space for that. Oh shit. Well, that's that. Actually, I wanted to show. Uh, I wanted to. <clears throat> Fuck it. <laughs> Gonna do that on Clip Studio then. What I wanted to go about is think, uh, for example, here we're gonna have like a player, uh, player token of their characters going on, same thing as usual, character token going on, uh, it occupies a block or a cell as Roll20 calls it, and here the, uh, the character token they can occupy only a block so they're here eventually they will be over here they will be go through in this they will go through this door then they can come in here and then here then here and now they're inside the room because the door is near the division of cells so that's cool but then they come here starting to go up the stairs first step is okay third step is kind of okay because it will be in that cell here third step though either gonna be here or they're gonna be here but they'll be a little bit like uh, skewer to the side almost going over the railing so it's not gonna look very it's not gonna look very elegant but it'll work and of course if there's no grids it looks a little bit weird with the grids you can see yeah, it kind of kind of looks alright, but without the grid, it's like uh, sure. Anyway, but that is good to know. I was planning on making a map and putting it on roll twenty, but now that I know that I have totally exceeded the the space I had, uh, I'll have to go and solve that problem, and also finish drawing this dungeon here, dungeon slash tower. It's not necessarily a dungeon, it's like a place. Um, Sam says so that sounds like something I would wear, the three shades of dark grey, red and gold. Clothes that only made. And Nathan says it is no fest. Yes, Marvelous is expensive, but you can find add-ons to Blender what let you work in the same way. Really? Oh, I, should I should look into that. The tiger says we're gonna fight wizards, maybe. Yeah, bold, put uh, like strike, strike down, maybe very hard. Because this is the thing I'm thinking about. There are these characters going on, and in case the players, the player characters, decide to fight against these wizards. They're gonna have like a lot of defenses going on, so I have to put that in think about that and keep that in mind. But not necessarily, they don't need to go and fight those wizards, they can find another way of solving problems. But if they do come and fight them, I don't want to be caught uh, without a battle map. And be like, okay, the wizard is like 
we have this 3 by 4 room fight. <laughs> I want to have a nice battle map that people can go and enjoy and do stuff inside of. I like I like I said last time I like um I like maps that have like uh elevation differences where you can get your your your, your combat and make it vertical. It's odd and tricky in you know, in every way possible, but it's also kind of nice because it forces the characters to think a little bit outside the box. Like, oh, I can actually jump up, or I can climb this or that. What else can I do? Instead of just running away. Or into the fight. But anyway. Uh, Oni says, same being rooms. And Sam says, good luck with that, Doug. Hope you managed to solve that problem. It's, it's not a big problem, really, Sam. I just need to delete the music. Uh, because that's what occupies the most space in there. It's not nice, but it's not impossible to solve either. It's just gonna take a while for me to work into. Anyway. Uh, if nothing else going on here, I just wanna throw in some final considerations here into this dungeon that I'm... I keep saying dungeon, but this is not a dungeon, so never mind that. Just some final considerations into this map here. Uh, like I said, there's an entrance and there's a wizard shop that people come in and out of. Uh, then there's the back side of the tower where there's a, a big ass storage area going on. And then a little hidden passageway from one tower to another and also leads to the underground, which may or may not exist. I'm still thinking about that. Trying to consider. The underground would lead, though, to an escape route through this tower here. Uh, then there's a tower with the staircase that goes up and then uh, around. And as it's going up here, uh, the whole middle is open. So... People are prone to falling on that, in that hole, and then as they get up here, uh, they can get out of this tower into the battlements, and then out into the main tower of the wizard where they would uh, take refuge in, ca uh, refuge in case things are things go awry for them. And the way I'm thinking about this tower is that the only way to climb up is through this staircase here however this whole place would be trapped to slow down intruders and as they get up there a uh, fight ensues in that very cramped space and also thinking of other ways to stop uh, invaders from like skipping this whole staircase tower so like no windows going on and some sort of some sort of trickery that makes this not as easily climbable say for example sleek walls or either slick walls or the height itself is already a big impediment and maybe even uh, I don't know just stuff that would make uh, all these other alternatives of going up other than the stair uh, being a disencouraged avenue that people would choose to pursue but also leave the option there in case people want to go that way it's an option That's so people don't feel forced to go one way, they have options, but also don't block them off completely. In any case, thinking of this is tricky, but it's part of the job. It's something you gotta do to keep uh, things fresh and interesting and appealing to all the players. 
ها قالوا كيب تاني معي but anyway uh, much shorter stream than usual but this is where we're calling it for today because uh, I have to go and take care of lunch now but other than that uh, thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching the stream and getting a little bit of insight into this uh, into this dungeon <laughs> tower that I've been making and just before we go very quickly I just want to show really fast the last uh, part of the last wizard tower that I made which you guys some of you saw this on a previous stream this is a wizard tower uh, it's like a shop you go inside there's this whole shop area going on to the side here behind the counter there's a door that leads to a corridor then a very long stairway that leads to the wizard's tower and uh, and in this one you can see that I actually furnished with some some whatever's going on I threw in a texture on the floor that so it's easier to see uh, the grid in case you're playing on a gridless board and also there's a it's kind of color coded as well uh, height it I, I color coded the height so the wider it is the higher it is although there's no real way to tell heights in this one but this is the previous uh, wizard tower that I thought of doing and then there are secrets here to the other side but I'm not gonna talk about that because <laughs> that's a uh, that's a spoilers but as you can see here I'll be posting this well I will be posting this uh, danger map here in my patreon that's so my patrons can uh, you know check it out and see a little bit of in the insight uh, that went into that and I'll be typing in some extra uh, some extra descriptions on it and then I'll be posting it later over there speaking of patreon uh, today the newest page page number three of call me yours true my latest comic is going up on patreon so if you're not a patron yet make sure to become one go over there check it out support me and my comic making endeavors uh, by becoming a patron today and other than that sad sad as it is I have to say this is it for today everyone once again thank you guys so very much for stopping by checking out uh, all the things all the things that we did a little bit into the uh, into the process of making maps and whatnot I didn't get a I didn't get to do a lot of the map today but we got to talk a little bit about that and I hope it was fun for everyone involved in the process and other than that I'll be seeing you guys next time tomorrow Saturday uh, we will probably be playing uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons so I will be streaming it you can come here tomorrow to check out our our Dungeons and Dragons stream uh, as our adventures go and do whatever it is that they were doing which is always a surprise so who knows even uh, and this is it for this weekend uh, two weeks from now I think uh, there will be another uh, weekend stream of D&D but it's gonna be different because someone else is gonna be DMing for a change so we're all excited to see how that goes but for now go out there and check out Incrugator he's one of our many friends who, all, who is also a streamer and he's playing some delicious Final Fantasy 4 online I don't know how that would go with a stream but go and check him out uh, tell him that Doug sent you and other than that have an amazing day everyone take care of yourselves and stay awesome and bye bye